Hello everybody, welcome to the Shy Cat Maker Lab demo episode. I'm very happy to be here at Can TV, which is a very nice partner for us to have at Shy Cat. My name is Matthew Wilson, I'm the Maker Lab instructor at the Chicago Center for Arts and Technology. Today I will be showing you all how to use an online platform to make some CNC artwork. But before we get into that, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Shy Cat, a little bit about myself, and then I'll walk you into the software. So to start, ShyCat is a arts education nonprofit. We are located in the south side of Chicago. We today are representing ourselves here at Can TV to share some of what we do and I'll get you all some information on how to use this art making form to get into whatever project you want. This is the agenda of what the flow is going to be for today. So. I'll be referencing this at different points in time. This is just going to let you all know what's going down. Who is ShyCat? Arts education nonprofit in South Loop. We have, well, Southside Chicago. We're kind of between Pilsen and Lawndale. So we service a lot of students between Little Village, uh, North Lawndale, Pilsen, and also various other parts of Chicago. We're not limited to a certain neighborhood. We really have students from a variety of places. This is our website, so if anyone's interested in finding out information about ShyCat, this is what the home page would be. As you can see, we have a highlight reel of all of our programs going on. If you just scroll down from there, you'll see the youth programs, which these are upcoming for the spring semester, well, winter slash spring of 2020. So it's divided into the three different studios. So this is what the design lab will be offering. Some drawing, some printmaking. This is what the digital lab will be offering. Uh, some podcasting for middle school, some graphic design for high school. And then the Maker Lab, this is what I'm offering. I'm offering more electronics and robotics for the middle school, and then a high voltage wearable tech for the high school. So this is our current website. This is how you can find out information about what we offer. We also have no, uh, no cost adult programming. So as a nonprofit, we offer all this programming and no cost to everybody. For the adults, you do need to have a GD or a high school diploma that you get in. You can come in and contact uh, anyone really anyone from the adult staff and you'll be able to figure out when is the best time to come in do the application see what kind of fits best into your uh, best into your interests then we have the breakdown of the programs they offer here as well if you need to get in contact the contact tab is right here at the top so you can just hit that here's our address we're accessible at 1701 West 13th Street we're accessible off of the 9 Ashland, the 12 Roosevelt, also the Pink Line. There's a variety of ways to get to us. Or if you feel like jogging, you feel like swimming, hey, you know, make it work. Whatever floats your boat. Uh, feel free to come on by. We're happy to uh, be here for people, and we're happy to help people figure out a new software, a new skill, get some job training, really focus on taking in people from all parts of Chicago and help them launch themselves in a new direction that they didn't have accessible to themselves before. Again, our programs for the spring are listed and available. We will be running from February 3rd to April 20. Uh, so it's a 12-week program. We kind of set up our breaks to match up with CPS, so uh, our spring break will be, I'm pretty sure, the first or the second week of April. Got to check the calendar again. But this is what we have going on in the spring. For anyone that's interested, feel free to call in, stop by, email someone. We'll be ready to accept any questions you have and help you figure out anything you need to to get into the programs. So. That is enough about ShyCat. We also, in addition to our classes, we like to provide events for people to come see us. This Friday, December, well, Friday, December 20th, will be the fall art show. That would be a great time to see some student artwork, which will still be in the gallery come mid-January. So you'll have plenty of time, rather December or in January, to come see the artwork that the students made in the fall of 2019. As I've said before, I am Matthew Wilson, the Maker Lab instructor. I use my skill set and my knowledge to teach students how to use computers, software, technology, and machines to fabricate their designs. Sometimes people want to design a Hello Kitty icon. Sometimes people want to design a Kung Fu Panda 3D print. Sometimes people want a variety of things. How do they get there? How do they learn it? 
how do they make it? That's my role. I take students from middle school through high school from various parts of Chicago. I have them in class Monday through Fridays after school programming that is non-cost to you. And then we work together to plan out our designs and we use the machines we have available. Uh, the Maker Lab that I specifically manage, I manage 10 3D printers, a laser cutter, two CNC routers, eight virtual reality headsets, 20 laptops, well, 20 Windows laptops, and a variety of other equipment, electronics, so on and so forth. So all of that is really in my domain, and I set it up for you, the youth of Chicago, to come on in and use it. Maker Labs in general are collaborative spaces to teach people to use the equipment, the skills, the software, anything really that they have on hand to make design-based projects and sometimes they're making solutions. Sometimes you're coming up with ways to better mount XYZ object on top of XYZ surface. Sometimes people are making glasses frames. Sometimes people are building parts for PC components such as SSD brackets. The list goes on and on and on. You can use all that equipment to get that done. Here's a kind of roundabout of some of the things that are my favorite within a Maker Lab. Starting from the top left, we have an Arduino set up on top of a breadboard with a potentiometer and a speaker hooked up. So all of this is more electronics and programming. If anyone's familiar with Arduino, it's a C-based language. You can go on and hop into that. When you download the IDE, it's available for free. There's tons of sketches already in it, so most of your work is already done. You just need to make sure you follow the correct approach to setting up your breadboard and your circuits. Otherwise, you're going to overload your components and get wrecked. Uh, top, middle, Oculus Go headsets. The students like to get on the headsets every now and then. I use it really more as a downtime activity, but I've also done classes where students make spherical images and visual assets to be used in a VR space. Uh, if anyone is interested in getting into VR work, that's something I kind of squeeze into my classes regardless, but that's, uh, it's popular. I would say really if that's something you want to get into, it would be a good idea to come on and stop by the Maker Lab. This is a screenshot of someone 3D modeling, Suzanne, who is a mascot of Blender, which is an open source 3D modeling software. Suzanne is currently under a subdivision surface, this is why she looks so smooth. Now we have some more machines on the bottom. We have an X-Carve, which is a CNC router, which I'm going to be talking more about later on today. We have a Lowe'sbot TAS 6 3D printer, and then some fast LED uh, strip of neon pixels. So these will be things that you will see in a Maker Lab. If someone's trying to program a code for addressable RGB LEDs, that's what that would be used for. If you're 3D printing like a rocket ship or something, that would be what the 3D printer is for. We have four of the Lowe's by Task 6s. We have one the x carves and one the Carvies from Inventables. So this is what the software is really into. We are now going to transition into the easel demo. Easel is an online software for designing projects and operating CNC machines, and it's made by Invincibles, the people who make CNC machinery that is popular around a lot of Maker Labs. They're one of the most popular brands, and they're based here in Chicago. I love using CNC machines. They're my favorite thing to do in the Maker Lab. That's why I'm focusing this demo on this today. With me, I have some projects, and I will show you what they are right here. I'll just change cameras, and... This is a graffiti project that I designed in Easel. This essentially started off with just plotting points, like you're plotting a vector path, and then you can curve the points, you can change the fill, the stroke, the depth, and you can move it around to change the composition. Uh, I personally like snakes, so I like to use snake as most of my graffiti demo text. This is a panel made out of two color HDPE, it's a plastic, and as you can see when you cut through the top layer, you reveal the white underneath, and that's how you get that nice contrast in there. In addition to my snake graffiti, I've brought along a Batman tile. The Batman tile follows the same concept as the snake. You start off with the tile, you place it down on the bed, make sure it's secure, you design the work in easel in the online studio, and then once you have everything the way that you want it, you can tell it how deep it needs to cut and the machine will go ahead and get to work. Uh, Batman being one of my favorite superheroes, so I really enjoyed making this piece. I just like designing things in general. So if you ever see me 
uh, bouncing around the walls with my CNC artwork is just because I love the process and I think it's a very fun process for everyone. We are now going to switch over to the easel tab so I can show you all how it looks, take you around the interface, and then we'll get on to designing some artwork. That being said, we can get out of the slideshow and into easel. This is what the project for the snake panel looks like. All of these are individual pieces. I could change the depth that it cuts through and easel is very helpful about getting you to understand how deep it is based on the total depth of your material. You can change the outline fill. You could also edit the points to make it curvier and pointy. And you in general can control the shape, the scale, etc. They make the options very easy and accessible for you. If you like to use imperial or metric, you can change between that with this toggle down here. You have scrolling bars for you to control the position of your content on the screen. You can also use the trackpad or the mouse wheel for that. Along the top, we have our navigation menu. We have ways to access the machine if you are plugged into one via USB. You have ways to access your editing options, and you have ways to import or export, etc., etc. Then we have all of our shape tools right here. So when you are done making a design, it can show you a preview here. And you can always rotate around this to go ahead and see it. This is based on the sizes that you enter and the material. The sizes and the material are listed here along the top of the right half of the screen. You can go ahead and change that. Just for example, I'll just change the color. So if I want it blue and white, green and white, it can be changed depending on what I put in. The dimensions of it can also be changed here and the bit that you have available. So these are all of the options that you have when you're working on a project in here. So if we pop into the Batman, the Batman project follows the same template. The cut depth, the position, the tools are here available to go ahead and add in more content, less content, really up to you. And then we also have the outline. I can move the position of that, the placement. All of these options are available. Once I'm done with designing it, I can hit this carve button and I can start the process of making my artwork. We are now on the TV demo. This is for Can TV, so let's go ahead and get to work on something. Let's start with some text. I'm going to hit the T on the left side of the screen to get some text. I imagine that people would like to see a sans serif font, so let's go ahead and click on Code Pro. And it is Christmas time in Chicago, well, globally, but let's just go ahead and say Christmas. This is a very common scenario that my students will get into. They'll type in something and it's too big. The words are going off the edge, if you could see here on the left side. You just simply need to make this a tad smaller and then boom, you have your text on here. So for anyone who's trying to make wedding invitations, birthday invitations, if you're trying to work on making a gift to someone, a significant other, you can put their name on the artwork. It's very really straightforward. You can change the depth here. So I can make it cut all the way to the bottom. I can make it not cut at all. I'm going to leave it at the 116th because that is where the color indication is changing. That will reveal the white within the middle. Let's imagine that I want to put in a pre-designed template. I can say I, that, that I want a heart. I can click on this heart. I can now move this all over the board. I have free reign over the design. So let's imagine I'm trying to make something that says, I love Christmas. I can just get another text box. I can keep this heart right here. And I can get more text to go ahead and there and say, I. So now I have completed a piece of artwork in probably the span of two minutes, <laughs> which is very quick for our art making process. But I can go ahead and say, I love Christmas. Let's imagine that's not what you want. Let's imagine you want to make your own design, your own skill set. In this scenario, this is how I got to make all of the graffiti within the snake panel right here. These are all curvilinear lines and I can go ahead and make this however I choose to. I'm now going to get this pen tool and let's imagine I want to start clicking around and plotting points. For right now, 
I can plot the points really wherever I decide. Nothing too crazy. And let's imagine that that's the shape I want. I'm just making a more graffiti-like T. After I have the shape selected, I could change the depth I want it to cut at. I could change the fill, the stroke, etc. And I can also edit the points. So I can click on a point, change it to curved, and now I have something that I could get to more uh, organic shapes, I would say. Along all of this design work, you can really come up with anything. You could draw a face, you could work on making graffiti, you can really do a lot of stuff. This could turn into a fish, this could turn into an eye, it could turn into an onk, and it, uh, really a variety of different shapes. <laughs> you can make it a Pac-Man, you can make it a walrus, really the possibilities are endless here. So let's imagine that that's the way I want to make my T. Could be done, could not be. I could hit the backspace or delete button on my keyboard, and I can always start over. So let's imagine I want to draw a marshmallow. I can just start off with four corners. Marshmallows are pretty much rectangles in a 2D sense. Then I could go ahead, select a point, and now I can start to make things curvilinear. And when I start to make things curvilinear, I can start to get more expressive. I can really engage with the artistic side of myself. And I can start to show motion. I could start to show things that are not available when you're just sticking with organic lines. So let's imagine I want to give this character some eyeballs. Let's imagine this is Marshmallow the DJ, which some of you may know who Marshmallow is. Some of you may not. Marshmallow essentially is a DJ who wears a, <laughs> obviously a marshmallow mask. And that's really his thing. So once I have this here, I can now add a smiley face, really. And the smiley face will look a little off at first. Once I select this bottom point and I make it curve linear, I now have smiley face. And I'm just using the handles, nothing crazy. So this is the way that we would design something. In this context, we really can do anything. If I want to select all of them, and I could downsize it, I could start to make some marshmallow friends, right? Let's say this marshmallow is friends with a star. <laughs> and they're going on a space adventure, something like that. We can always go ahead, change this, Get some eyeballs in there. And we can really repeat the process. All these things are available whenever you're trying to create in this space. And this is really what I push my students to get into. They can start to make all kinds of images, all kinds of scenes. So since these two are going on an adventure, we can start to worry about where they're going on the adventure. Are they skipping over hills and rainbows? Are they traveling across Mount Everest? Where are they going, really? Once you have a shape completed, we can now go ahead and edit the points. And let's imagine they're going over a hill. We can now stretch this up. We can change that back to a fill. And we can start to copy and paste this. Just normal com Windows commands, Control C, Control V, or Command C, Command V if you're on Mac. And they're jumping over hills. They're going on a, <laughs> going on a trip in their favorite rocket ship. With that, view, uh, let's go ahead and make a rocket. Why not? You can use these handles on the edge to go ahead and design a little rocket. So let's imagine they have a taller one. A 
and we could go ahead and actually let's draw the wings for it. And then we have the start of our rocket ship. Or let's make it flying with them, good composition practice. So it'll be flying along with them. Maybe they're in some space hills somewhere. Who knows where they're going? They're a marshmallow and a star. The world is their oyster. They can go wherever they want. Maybe they're not over the hills. Maybe these are planets out there. You never really know what it's going to get into, right? All these things are available once you start to think in the design sense. So you can start to make shop signs, you can make nameplates, you can make invitations. If you're into printmaking or if you're into stamp making, you can also use this software to design a stamp. They already have all of these things available for you. So if you wanted to get into making icons or placeholders if you were working at a bar, if you were working at a restaurant, if you're designing something for your phone, if you're making something funny, let's imagine your parents are a chef, one of your parents is cooks a lot, you can go ahead and make them a gift. If you're proposing to someone, you can also design a box on here since you can, you can punch all the way through material, go ahead and design the box, have the lettering inside the box. There's a lot of different ways that you can use this software. The whole point is that you're trying to push yourself creatively. So there's a variety of different things that you can design. It's really how far you want to push yourself. We'll make a note. Pandas are my favorite, so I frequently use that panda icon. But all of this is available. Again, the Batman was approached in the same way. It started off with circles. I gradually started to uh, lap points together around the circles as like a template. And once I had all the points in there, I changed them to curves. And then I also started to break them down. I just used text for that. And the actual face shapes aren't that hard at all. Those are just like three or four points. That's nothing. That's nothing extreme. And when you get good and comfortable at it, this is what this can be used for. You can go ahead and start to work on making organic drips, start to make your own strokes for graffiti letters, and really just go ahead, take your time, think creatively, kind of push yourself. The more you put into it, the more you're going to get out of it with this software. It's really fun and flexible to use. So, again, I'm the Make Lab instructor at ChiCat. I'm going to take you to the homepage again. If you look at ChiCat.org, www.ChiCat.org, this is the landing page you would see. You'll be able to see the youth and adult. You'll be able to see some more information about us. Go ahead, hit that About page, who we are, our mission and vision. Essentially, we want to use what we have to help others gain a new lease on life, a new lens, a new perspective. Feel free to join us on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook. I personally love the Instagram and Twitter. This is our Instagram. Feel free to find us at Chicago Center for Arts and Technology on there. Feel free to find us right here at ChiCat on Twitter. There's a variety of places that you can reach us, Facebook, YouTube, etc. I do want to thank you all for joining me here today. I'm very happy to be able to share this skill set with you all. If some of you all want to make some artwork like this, go ahead and go for it. It's possible. Anything is really doable once you get comfortable with the software and comfortable with the materials. Now, if you're a huge Marvel or DC fan, go for it. There's nothing wrong with that. You're going to have fun regardless. Everyone likes their favorite superheroes. Feel free to design something for Captain Marvel, Lady Thor, etc., etc. Maybe you want to make something for Star Wars. Go ahead and design yourself a Jedi symbol or a Sith logo. It's all possible within the software, and I hope that you all start to use it and make your own artwork. Again, thank you for joining me, and I hope you all have a nice rest of your day.